In the last year, 3D printing has gotten really affordable, and that is entirely driven by all of the inexpensive kits which are coming out of China. So this is one of those kits. This is the uh, Anycubic Cossel, also goes by the name of the Cossel Mini. It has a 180 millimeter diameter circular bed because it is a Delta style printer. Now, I got this printer from GearBest.com and it costs $170 over there, which is the lowest price that I've seen uh, as of today on the internet. Uh, you can certainly get this printer from eBay and uh, AliExpress and maybe even like Amazon, but I think that you're not going to find a cheaper price than the one at GearBest. So I'm going to provide a link down below uh, to the GearBest uh, listing so that you guys can get this, price, this printer at a good price. So yeah, as I mentioned a minute ago, it is a Delta style printer, obviously. Uh, it's not going to be like the Cartesian style printers that I reviewed previously. Uh, speaking of which, right here in the card, you'll want to go watch that, um, that review video comparing three i3 clones if you haven't seen it already. Reason being is we're going to give this printer a score, a numeric score for all of the components, uh, and then we're going to be able to compare apples to oranges uh, with those printers to this Delta printer. So, yeah, Cartesian printers move in X, Y, and Z, so they, they sort of make sense, you know? You move this way, you move this way, or you move this way. But with this printer, uh, you have these three legs that go up, and you have these arms which swing, and yet somehow the end effector manages to stay uh, parallel to the bed. It's, it's kind of cool. You know, all of the, the, my friends that come over and my girlfriend, this is their favorite uh, printer. They all, um, you know, this one has the most sex appeal, if, you, if that's what you want to look at it that way. Um, so yeah, if you want to buy a 3D printer because you want to wow people or you just want to get the coolest uh, looking thing, this is definitely the 3D printer for you to get. So that's kind of the takeaway, and you don't need to watch the rest of this video uh, because, yes, this is a fantastic printer, they're very high quality prints, and it is very cool to watch it work. And my print is just finished, so we can now uh, dive into the componentry and give this thing a score. <laughs> cool. Starting off with the frame, the construction is entirely these 2020 uh, aluminum extrusions joined with these plastic corner pieces. So you can see at the top, there's a single row uh, making that triangle, and at the bottom, there's a double row of the, uh, or sort of, yeah, double layers of the aluminum extrusions. So it's a nice solid frame made out of metal, so I'm giving it a four. These, um, these corner pieces are on uh, injection molded nylon, so they're not 3D printed, so they're a little higher quality than a 3D printed part would be. So yeah, it's a great frame. Uh, it gets as good a score as any of these at this low price point. Next we'll look at the carriage extruder mechanism, and in this case it's called an end effector. And so this plate on the end effector is made out of uh, aluminum, it's quite thick, very very solid. The, uh, the housing, which, which holds the E3D V6 hot end, is also made out of metal. It's a sort of a bent uh, sheet metal construction. And of course, like I said, the E3D V6 hot end uh, is top quality. Uh, very nice componentry there. So. Uh, all in all, uh, the nicest, or you know, tying with the nicest uh, X carriage uh, extruder mechanism that we've seen. So, top marks, uh, four out of five. Next, we've got the Z height mechanism. So, in this case, that is these sort of uh, trolleys or pulley carriages. I don't know what to call them. Uh, they've got these bearing wheels, which have a nylon plastic sort of wheel on the outside of the bearing and that rolls in the tracks on the uh, 2020 extrusions. So, looks a little chintzy. I can do this to sort of flex them with my hand. I don't like that, um, but it doesn't seem to affect print quality at all. And there is a more expensive version of this printer which you can buy that has um, linear rails on that mount inside of there, and so that's much higher quality, although you're gonna pay uh, substantially more for that printer. If you're going to upgrade this, uh, this end effector for maybe, let's just say you want to do multiple color printing or whatever, um, you got to keep in mind that the whole point of a Delta printer is that the, the effector can move very quickly and that the part itself remains stationary, so uh, you get very fast prints. If you're going to add more weight to the end effector, 
then um, you will not be able to print as quickly. So um, the reason that these, uh, you know, pulley carriages don't um, don't make that kind of motion while it's printing is because the end effector is lightweight. So if you're going to upgrade and add more lightweight, that might turn into a problem. Personally, I might upgrade. I might just leave the printer the way it is just so that I can get very fast prints uh, when I need them. At any rate, the, uh, the Z-height mechanism is, is not the best, so I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 just because of that flex. Um, maybe you could print it differently, although, again, I'm not having a problem with it. I just, in theory, I don't like it. So 2 out of 5. For this portion, I'm going to have to flip the printer on its side here so that we can see underneath. So we can see these um, stepper motors, and they are uh, nicely labeled with the any cubic uh, branding on them. So that's that's good, but they are kind of small. They're, uh, they could be quite a bit bigger and you'd still have room underneath here, although they, they do the job sufficiently. Again, like I said, it's all about sort of minimizing weight in the Z axis or in the Z direction on those carriages and on the end effector itself. So because that whole mechanism is so lightweight, these smaller stepper motors do a fine job. But again, if you wanted to upgrade and move around some more weight, you would need to upgrade these steppers. So all in all, the steppers look to be really high quality in construction, but they are kind of small. So I'm going to give them a, a 4 out of 5, um, just because they're perfectly suited for the job that they do. And it does seem that they are made by Cossel. So I trust them more than all of these uh, Brand X steppers. So this is the main board, and it's a pretty good one. I'm sorry that it's kind of... Um, hidden behind all the wiring here but you can see the main chip and it is a genuine AT Mega 2560 chip so that's good you can also see the removable uh, stepper motor driver boards so that means that you can upgrade those you can use sort of silent stepper motor drivers to, to quiet down the printer or you can uh, also upgrade to the more fine resolution printer drivers that do like 1 32nd of a step so in theory getting uh, finer prints, uh, better resolution out of your prints. But the best thing about this board is that it has six stepper motor drivers. So that means that without replacing the board, you could uh, introduce a, a filament splitter and put um, multiple color printing on this printer. Um, of course, you would have to upgrade the firmware, which would be the difficulty in that project. But, you know, um, splitters exist that just sort of mount in line on the Bowden tube. So minimal, uh, minimal effort to get to the mechanics, anyway, of the, uh, of the dual color print. The, the firmware might be another story. So, yeah, uh, it's a good board. It earns a 4 out of 5. But I do have to give a caveat to that score, and that is to say that Delta printers require a lot of computing power to do the moves. So this uh, board is pretty much tapped out as far as um, speed. So if you try to run it much faster, the chip uh, won't be able to handle it. Now there are upgraded boards such as uh, Smoothieware or Smoothie Board, that's probably the most popular. And uh, those can handle the, uh, the complex math uh, better than this board can. But that being said, perfectly suited and it works perfectly as the printer sits. So let's move this like that and we can look at the display. So the display is uh, this one with the knob here and the you know push button. We've seen this one before and it earns a 3 out of 5 and the reason not 4 out of 5 is because it's not the larger screen. I would like to see the, um, what do they call it, the full graphics uh, display. So. Uh, yeah, 3 out of 5, pretty self-explanatory there. And finally, we're going to look at the bed. Um, yeah, so it's not good. Uh, it's a pretty nice thick piece of glass that comes in the kit, and it also comes with this uh, printing surface that you adhere to the glass. Now, there's no name on the printing surface, but I assume that this is uh, build tack. And it works great, cold, uh, so I get the prints to stick just fine with this PLA. And that's the stuff that came in the kit and also the stuff which 
most people are going to use most of the time. So there's no need for a heated bed unless you want to print with the more exotic uh, filaments such as nylon, PETG, ABS, uh, all of the higher strength plastics will require that heated bed so that you get good bed adhesion uh, on your first layer. Now, the good news is that you can get a heated bed for this printer from eBay, and it costs less than $25. So, the even better news is that the firmware, which I have installed on this printer, and that is the firmware that you can get from the AnyCubic official Google uh, Documents download site, that firmware includes support for a heated bed, which means that all you have to do is install the heated bed on the printer itself, plug the heated bed into the board, and the firmware will already be off and running and you should have no issues. Now, worth noting that you will also need to spend maybe another $20 to get a uh, more beefy power supply. And right here, I will show you, this is the power brick that comes with the printer, and this is all the power that you need uh, what is this? Just a couple of amps, right? Six amps. And that's all the power that you need for uh, the heater on the nozzle because the nozzle really doesn't suck up that much power, whereas a heated bed does. So you will need to get one of the classic sort of aluminum boxed in uh, power supplies for this printer. So maybe uh, you're looking at about a $40 upgrade for a heated bed between the, the bed itself and the power supply. But uh, you will certainly be able to print in all of the uh, materials after you do that. And the other bad thing about this heated, about this bed is that it's circular. And that means that you've lost those corners uh, for printing. And that's a lot of uh, s uh, surface area, a lot of square, square inches that, that you would have been able to print. So your print volume is smaller. Now, this is a taller printer than, uh, than the other ones which I've reviewed. So that's nice, but you lose a lot on the bed itself. So those, uh, all those factors mean that this bed is definitely the Achilles heel of this printer, which uh, sort of gives it a, a one out of five uh, as far as the score for the bed goes. And that puts the total score for this printer at 22 points, which means that it is only one point behind the GTEC. And the GTEC uh, earned 23 points. So uh, with a heated bed on this, I would give it that, uh, that 23rd point. And so we're tied for first place with the GTEC. So that about covers all of it. It is a very good printer for the money. Um, it's a challenge to build, but I would say that uh, if you have patience and are willing to sort of go uh, following the instructions on the internet, um, which are mostly complete, uh, I'd say that your chances of getting this thing built are, are, are pretty good. You're, you're, you're gonna have a good printer and you're gonna be able to get it done. It took me about six hours to build it, and I would say that most people are gonna be between six and 12 hours. Uh, to fully build it and get to where they're printing, uh, including the installing of the firmware. So we're going to have to look at these uh, with a white backdrop just because I did print them in black PLA, which is the filament that came with this printer. And um, if we look, we can see there's nothing wrong with this uh, cube. This is the one centimeter test cube that I, the standard sort of uh, first print. And because I did not trust the bed adhesion, I printed this... Uh, this cube with a raft. So that's where you're seeing this this little lip right here on the corner is because that was where I had to cut the raft off the print. And because again it's a sort of a, a rough print surface just so you, that it sticks on the build tack, uh, you're not going to have that shiny smoothness that you get from glass prints. Now I could flip the the print bed over and use glue stick and get a perfectly smooth print but of course my uh, my bed adhesion might not be as good especially cold. So there's not a lot that we can learn from this uh, test cube. It's pretty much perfect. Um, but the thing is that a Delta printer um, does not struggle as much with a test cube the way that a Cartesian printer does. So for a, des a Delta printer, it's better that we look at a hemisphere. And uh, we should be able to see some artifacts in the hemisphere here, if we can get the camera to focus, that we would not see uh, on a on a Cartesian style printer. So right there, you can see them, uh, sort of right on that edge, right there in the shiny spot, you see those artifacts. Now they are very faint, and they're hard to even feel, but if you go looking for them, you can find them. You hear that dragging of the, uh, of the nozzle, that kind of knocking noise? That's the nozzle tip 
dragging along uh, the bed as it moves too rapidly. So the rapid movements in between when it's laying filament down, um, it's, it's moving at a very fast speed. And the reason the nozzle drags at those speeds is because the board can't keep up with the map. Uh, this board is really taxed to its limits. Um, and the reason I know this is because when you move slowly across the bed, it has no problem. Uh, it does not drag. But as soon as you do a rapid movement, it definitely dips down and drags on the bed. Now listen to all of that. Yeah, lots of drag. But that being said, it still prints perfectly. So, uh, funny thing. Uh, yeah, well, that's about it. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell icon down below. I do not release videos very often. So without the bell, you're probably going to miss all of my videos. Uh, which is a tragedy. Because, you know, you want to keep seeing me. All right. <laughs> Stupid, but we're going to end it there. See you next time.